as a generalization, yes, there's more male DJs because that's kind of what boys do, apparently. Represent Radio 107.3 FM. <laughs> My, my personal journey into music was pretty much facilitated by men. It didn't feel like there was a barrier of like me being a woman and then having... It was just like, you you like this sound, so you're part of the family, and that's that. I'm still quite young, but from looking when I first started, there's so many more people who I'm surrounded by now, and you're like, OK, yeah, like we're all together and we're doing this and it, it doesn't need, even need to be like a sing and dance like yeah we're girls but there are all there are way more female DJs like Karen from Hipsters Don't Dance shout out um, Mina Jubilee there's just so many coming around now and act who are sick we're just sick fundamentally we're sick <laughs> female DJ that I knew of in Leeds. When I moved to London, I met a lot more women that were interested in music. and hopefully what I can do is work to inspire other girls to start production. There's loads of people who are putting together like female-based collectives about music and it's not just like, a one-off or like, oh, how rare. It's just becoming normal. I met Tash LC and Juba, who I started my party Boko Boko with. So with them, we kind of... Uh, support each other and help each other. If one of us can't do a gig, someone else will do it and that kind of thing. So we've kind of helped each other quite a lot. It makes sense. It's just like, why wouldn't you support other people who understand you really well and have your best interests at heart? <laughs> you think growing up in South London in particular and around the area of Brixton, there's so much nightlife going on and from the age of like 15 I'd say we were getting into clubs illegally in the area and just going around it's like sound system culture. We have a big Afro-Caribbean community so there's a lot of dance hall, Afro beats, um, stuff like that which I've listened to for a long time. I've been to Ghana twice, Sierra Leone twice um, and each time I go I work with local producers, vocalists, um, I spend time meeting local musicians, collecting samples, and I've spent a lot of time collaborating there, made some really exciting music and things which uh, I can bring back to London. You have um, producers, uh, kind of experimenting more with the more electronic sides um, of music as well. Club music is kind of going back to Ghana from the UK and you, re you see this cross-pollination of all these sounds. Everything from like grime, jungle, garage, house, 
um, all of these things turn London into kind of an epicenter of culture and music. <laughs> sad thing is the fact that this music hasn't always been considered valuable. So there's this form called Form 696 which I've actually had to um, complete for other promoters before which kind of was used by the police as a way to shut down parties that they believed had a potential to be violent um, and there's a lot of prejudice around grime and dancehall and the culture I guess isn't considered equal to maybe like the house, the techno scene in terms of venues. There seems to be this kind of imbalance which is slowly I think being resolved in the last few years um, with the, the emergence of Afrobeats as a really prominent sound in London and it's become really important. <laughs> spiraled out because people are like yes that's sick and then everyone else puts their own little bits of slang in but it's just built up on like london based slang which again originates from like a caribbean background radio waves that you could pick up in new orleans that's what traveled across jamaica and that's what you could pick up on a transistor radio so then an island that that small has completely changed modern music my family members, when they came over from Jamaica, that, like, the thing that bridged the gap between them and like the community that was already existing here in Britain was music. Because they must have been like, yo, this beat's sick, let me come to your dance. And then they'd be like, okay, it helped a few stuff like racism, which you think is like, that's mad to say, but fundamentally it's like, oh, these people aren't so bad, I like this music. Oh, we could be friends after all. And you get to raise things like cultural appropriation, who owns what, like, can white people come to black people's dances? Even on like, through gender, through race, through everything, people need to educate themselves and then be able to feel comfortable that they can just mix. Cause that's, the, for me, the only way I can see progression is through people understanding each other better and just being a unit rather than further dividing themselves through demographics or race or gender or whichever category you like. <laughs>